What is up guys, welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day, and on this channel, I talk about cybersecurity and other live stuff. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some things I've learned in six months of quitting social media. Uh, full disclosure, I am back on social media. I'll be talking about that later on in the video, uh, but I am back on social media after six months. Uh, so if you want to follow me uh, on Instagram or uh, Twitter, it's at Day Cyberworks, D-A-Y-C-Y-B-E-R-W-O-X. I'll leave links to them in the description. But um, let's talk about the things I've learned in six months of quitting. Um, the very first thing I've learned is self-control and self-restraint from impulsive decisions. Um, one thing about social media is uh, the way the way it's designed and the way we're kind of wired to use it is like we're super impulsive about what we do. Um, from you know simply just picking up our phones to um, always trying to check our feed or check our no notifications to see um, who has just posted or who just liked our, our post or who just commented on our post or shared our post. Like, it's always impossible. Like, you know, you're, you're always like grabbing your phone to check what's going on, you know, or even when you're scrolling your feed, your, your, your feed, a lot of things you do are impulsive from like, you see a picture, you like it, you see a picture, you like, like you can, you instantly get the results of, of your of your of your actions right so you're scrolling you, you can immediately uh t double tap and you've liked you don't even have to like find the like button you can double tap and it 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 it, it reduces reduce, reduces your 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 self restraint because you can easily get gratification from like you can easily get gratification and you can get it really fast um and that's how like it's rewiring our brains so in that period of time I've learned to be less uh, impulsive, you know, to have more self-control, not always grabbing my phone all the time to check who's liked, you know, my post or who shared my post or who's commented on my post and giving me more self-restraint, you know, to, to give myself enough time for my phone, uh, or from the digital world in general. And, you know, this can, this, this can also, you know, apply into other areas of your life where you're more intentional about the decisions you make, um, where, whereby you're not using that rewiring, uh, of your brain that social media has caused to make you super impulsive in making decisions. Um, I mean, it's, in some cases, it's great to be spontaneous or whatever, but being impulsive sometimes might not be really good. So I've learned to be less impulsive and uh, have more self-control and self-restraint. Second thing is the mental clarity. Truth is, like, when I was still on social media, um, I I wouldn't say I, I had, like, I, I wasn't, I didn't have mental clarity, but there were definitely times that it definitely fogged like fogged as in f-o-g-g-e-d my uh my mental clarity in a sense whereby i was you know i would i would i would be bored or something i don't have anything i'm doing or i have something i'm doing but i'm just like tired or bored i grab my phone and i'm just cycling from instagram to twitter to snapchat to um instagram to twitter to snapchat to twitter to instagram to and just cycling back and forth and you can do that for you know 30 minutes to one hour to two hours to hours at the end. And over time, you start realizing that you, you start getting mentally tired and mentally, um, like, fogged. Like, your 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 brain starts getting really um, heavy in, in a way, and it reduces your mental clarity. And when you do that over and over and over and over again, in my experience, it just kind of keeps you in a, in a state of not having that mental clarity, which is really good which you really need if you are if you know if you're someone who you know studies a lot or learns a lot your mental clarity is really important because for me like in my learning and my study and I, I try to you know quit mental notes or mind map things and when i when i don't have that mental clarity it messes with that flow for me so i've been able to have more mental clarity in my study and in my learning um and just in general so that's another thing i've i've learned in the last six months of quitting social media the third thing i've learned is um having control over my self-image so in the sense that social media kind of conditions you in a way um and this is like you know based of, in, of individuals you know like of course it's it's like you can have the uh the fortitude or the strength to be super authentic about yourself out there but re realistically it's more it's easier to kind of fall into the trap of trying to create an image of yourself out there that isn't necessarily always a lie, but it might not accurately describe who you really are. You're not essentially lying about yourself, or you're not essentially, um, you know, saying you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not manipulating people about who you really are. But 
the image that your social media presents of you sometimes might not directly align with what your real life is. And for me, like, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that much of an issue for me. It was just more so just the fact that I had to maintain this personality or persona of this like really smart person or, you know, amazing cybersecurity professional or genius or whatever. So for me, I've, I've been able to kind of gain control over my self-image. Um, and it's something that I'm still working on. Um, it's something that I, I'm, I'm going to try to learn and understand about how I really present myself out there on social media or in the internet um, to really properly and accurately do, uh, describe who I am, you know, without sending false notions or making people see me in a different light than I really am. Um, and then another thing I've, I've learned is to really not fall for the hype. Like, there's so much hype out there, like, and it's easy to um, really fall into the trap of falling for the hype. Like, people always make things seem bigger or better than they are because it makes, you know, it makes you feel, it makes them feel a, self, a sense of, like, self-worth, which is not bad. I know I do that sometimes. Like, me, I can't, like, I mean, most, most of the things I talk about are things that are, you know, I just do. And I try to talk about them modestly. But you'd see posts like, you know, how I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of things like, you know, certain things that just make you think that, geez, I, I, I really have to, have to, have to, have to, you know, I have to follow the hype. I have to make sure, like, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm like, there's so much hype out there, right? Especially even in the cybersecurity field, it's like, oh, I just, you know, I, I like, I don't even know exactly how to, how to put it, but there's so much hype out there. I don't want to, you know, mention specific things. Um, and for me, I've kind of been able to kind of chill from the hype and just, you know, not be faced by it because everyone's voice is different. Everyone's like, everyone is different. So like, if you fall for the hype, if you follow the hype, like you get burned out really easily, you get burned out really fast, like run your own race and just, you know, leave your life for yourself. So I've learned to not fall for the hype and just, you know, be chill. Uh, next thing is making tough decisions and taking risks. So quitting social media was definitely a tough decision. Not in the sense that, you know, I had any sort of attachment to it. But in this day and age, like having a social media is, you know, is, especially when you have like a, a decent amount of following, like at least over 8,000 or over 2,000. I, I think I had like maybe over 3,000 on my um, Instagram and on my Twitter, like, I had over 1,000, like, getting close to 2,000. Letting go of that was a lot because, like, it takes time and effort to to kind of build those followers of people that kind of engage with your content or follow you. So letting go of that is, is actually not, you know, as easy because you I, I had become, like, in, in a way, right, um, attached to that, right? That's, it's like a, it's a possession of mine. Like those, those are my followers, right? Those are people that, those are my, my, my subscribers or whatever. So those are my followers on Instagram. Those are my followers on Twitter and letting go of those followers that I've built over the years or over months or whatever. It, it was, it was a tough decision and also a risk in the sense that would I, you know, be able to, you know, successfully continue to continuously build my brand and my YouTube and everything, which I have been able to, like, without the followers or without the people on YouTube. And in the real sense of it, most of my YouTube um, streams or my YouTube like um, uh, viewers do not actually come from social media. But it was definitely, like, a tough decision in that sense, letting go of that um, attachment to those followers and, um, you know, to everything, to the likes, to the comments and everything, and, you know, taking that risk. So I've learned, you know, to, to make tough decisions. I've been making tough decisions my entire life um, and also taking risks. So that's another thing I've learned in the six months. Another thing I've learned is, you know, to, it's less self-comparison. So one of the things that I, you know, struggled with on, when I was on social media, um, which I did talk about in my video um, about quitting social media was, was self-comparison. Um, I, I did, I found myself sometimes comparing myself with people who are like way ahead of me. Like they're way, 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 way ahead of me because like, I set a high standard for myself and I'm, I'm super ambitious and that's great because like it helps, it pushes me, it drives me. But it, the, the bad side of that is when you start comparing your, comparing yourself to other people and it's even crazier and funnier when the people that you're comparing yourself to are, are way ahead of you or maybe they've, they've had more time for something or they're way older so like it's not even a fair comparison for yourself but 
you find yourself doing that, um, and it's just not healthy. So I've learned to to do that less. Um, and you know, I'm I'm working on um even now that I'm back on there to not do that anymore. And then the final thing I've learned is just being intentional about how I use it, like having a purpose for you know what I use it for. So for for every post, for every everything I do. There, it has to be intentional. Like I'm not gonna be impulsively posting things, which I wasn't doing before. But now I have more intention behind my 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 use of social media. Like I'm gonna be more intentional about you know when I use it, how I use it, who I engage with, so who I follow, what I want to see in my feed. Every single thing I'm doing on social media, I'm gonna be more um, intentional about it. Like I, if I don't want to see anything in my feed, I'm not gonna have it in my feed. I'm gonna you know tell Instagram don't show me this or f- unfollow that person or you know. Everything that I, I do, I'm going to be doing on social media now that I'm back on it is going to be fully, fully intentional. For example, um, I started with I started with like getting back my Snapchat. So when I first got my Snapchat, I, I, I decided that, okay, for the first eight hours of the day, I wasn't going to use Snapchat at all. So I tried that and, and you know, it was pretty good. I, I did that for the weekdays. I kind of get myself a little more latitude on the weekends. Um, but that's something I'm actually going to implement into like all of my social media. So on the weekdays for the first eight hours of the day, I'm not going to have social media on my phone. So like, for example, like before, I, before I sleep, way before I sleep, I already have the video from my phone. So I don't wake up with like any notifications or any of the social media apps. So for the, the first eight hours of the day, I'm able to, you know, be, be focused to do everything I need to do. Um, I'm my most productive self. And, you know, we have only three eight hours and eight hours in the day. Out of those three eight hours, the first eight hours, there's no social media. Part of the last eight hours is probably going to be spent on sleep. And in the middle, I have study and other things I need to do. So it's going to be a, li- a little, a little, like, it's going to be a little, little wiggle room for me to use it. So, like I said, I'm going to be super intentional about, about how I use it. But those are the things I've learned um, in six months of quitting social media. If you want to follow me um, on Instagram or Twitter, um, it's at DayCyberWalks, my, my former handle. Thankfully, I was able to get that back. I don't know how I did that, but I was able to get it back, so that's good. But yeah, uh, show, follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter. I'll leave links to uh, my my handles in the description, so definitely use them or just search me up on Instagram or Twitter at Day Cyberwalks. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you found something valuable in this video, um, and I'm, I'm going to be sharing my journey as I go um, in social media, um, just sharing tips or things I'm learning along the way. So I hope you guys, you know, like these videos and follow me along on that journey. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.